Hey everyone, welcome back to Clinical Physio with me, Khalid Maidan. Today we're going to be taking you through all you need to know about palpation of the lumbar spine. So when we're palpating the lumbar spine, we will feel for similar things to peripheral joints, such as muscle tone, swelling, deformity, but we'll also have a specialized focus on pain, range, and end feel, considering particularly if each individual lumbar spine segment is hypermobile or hypomobile. Before we go into that a little bit more, let's take a close look at the lumbar spine in particular. So here we have the lumbar spine. When you're going through your palpation with your patient, you will be able to palpate directly over the spinous processes at each level. So for example, we have the L5 spinous process, L4, L3, and so on. Lateral to the spinous process, is the facet joints, and we have the facet joints on both the right and left sides. A facet joint is what links one vertebral segment to the other. So for example, here we have the L2 spinous process, here's the L3 spinous process, and therefore here is the right-sided facet joint that connects L2 to L3. Lateral to the facet joints, we have the transverse processes, and we have those on both the right and left side of each spinal segment. Now it's important to remember that whilst we can palpate the spinous processes, we can't palpate directly onto the facet joints or transverse processes, as there is soft tissue that's overlying it. However, we should remember that palpating over the top of the facet and transverse processes will still tell us if this part of the vertebral segment is hyper or hypomobile. And we will also be able to see if the structures in this region are irritated when we palpate, as this may show that it reproduces our patient's pain. So before you complete your palpation with your patient lying in prone, you may like to do a quick palpation whilst they're in a standing position. And that's because there are certain muscles which will be active in a standing position that will be relaxed when your patient is in prone. So you'll get much more information about them when your patient is standing. So the first area that we're going to palpate is the iliac crest on the right and the left sides. And we look for any pain in these areas because the uh, quadratus lumborum and latissimus dorsi muscles attach into the iliac crest. So we might palpate these areas to see if there's any pain. We can also palpate the paraspinal muscles uh, on either side of the spine. We can do that on the right side and on the left side. So we're palpating these different areas uh, with the focus on the muscles to see if there is any increased tone in these muscles, if there's particular pain on palpation of these muscles, which may indicate a tightness or an overactivity of those muscles. And it's important to compare the right and left sides. Following that, you may also palpate the PSIS on both the right and left sides. They are often easy to find because they are represented by two little dimples uh, in, the, in the lumbar spine area. And you can either observe that dimple in some patients or it'll be very easy to palpate uh, as a small little uh, crevice, as it were, where the PSIS are. Uh, PSIS stands for posterior superior iliac spine, which is a part of the sacroiliac joint or the SIJ. So if people have pain on palpation of the PSIS, it may indicate a dysfunction within the sacroiliac joint. The other reason to palpate the PSIS on either side is to see if they are in fact level. If they are not level, this may tell you about either a twisting of the pelvis in a rotational manner or a tilting of the pelvis in a side flexion manner. And that can be due to a couple of reasons. It may be because you have tighter muscles on one side. So, for example, let's say that we have a patient with a much tighter QL on the right than the left. That may cause the pelvis on the right side to be lifted higher than the left, and therefore you might expect the PSIS on the right to be higher than the left. It may also be due to a leg length discrepancy. So, for example, if you have a patient whose right leg is shorter than their left leg, you may expect the PSIS on the right to be lower than it is on the left because of the fact that the pelvis adjusts to the leg length discrepancy. Other reasons why your patient's pelvis may not be quite exactly level may be because of lifestyle changes or work changes. For example, does your patient have a job where they're consistently standing more towards the right than the left? 
In a social situation, does your patient tend to stand on their left side when they're talking to someone on the right side? Those may be other things that you consider when you see the PSIS not in the same position on the right and left sides. So now we're going to show you how to find your way around the lumbar spine so that you can complete your palpation at any lumbar spine segment. And the easiest way of finding each segment in the lumbar spine is by locating the spinous process at each particular level. And you'll find the spinous process right in the center of the patient's back. So there are two ways of finding specific segments as a starting point for your lumbar spine palpation based on the presence of bony landmarks. You can either start at the top of the lumbar spine and work your way downwards, or you can start at the bottom of the lumbar spine and work your way upwards. So for example, you can start at T12 to find L1, and the way to find T12 is to palpate the lowest rib of your patient. So if you find the lowest rib, then you can mark that round to T12, and you should be able to feel the spinous process for T12, which is the central prominence which is in line with the 12th rib that inserts into the spinal segment. So once you've found T12, we go on to L1, and then you can go through the rest of the lumbar spine. Or you can start at the bottom and work your way up. And the way to start at the bottom is to find your patient's iliac crest. And the iliac crest in general is in line with the L4 spinous process. So if you find your iliac crest and move across to the center, the bony central prominence in line with the iliac crest will be your L4 spinous process. So from there, you can go down to the L5 spinous process if you want to, and then you can go on to the rest of the lumbar spine upwards. And it's a good habit to be aware of both for general practice, uh, so that you can easily find your palpation from the top downwards or from the bottom upwards. So when we find our particular segment, it is commonplace to perform two main spinal palpation techniques. We can either perform a central posterior anterior pressure, also known as a central PA, where we palpate directly down onto the spinous process. Or we can perform a unilateral posterior anterior pressure, also known as a unilateral PA, where we push down on either side of the vertebra. So when performing your technique, it is commonplace to uh, have the heel of your hand commonly known as where the pisiform bone sits, onto the aspect of the vertebra being palpated. So if we were uh, palpating the central spinous process here, that's where the heel of our hand goes. Our other hand forms a V-shape between the third and fourth digits, and this sits on top of the index finger of the lower hand. As a therapist, we will be standing to the side of the patient with our elbows locked and our knees extended so that our body weight can provide the necessary pressure for the palpation. And because our body weight is providing the necessary pressure, it allows our hand to remain soft, so that it allows you to feel exactly what is happening at the segment being palpated. So when performing our central PA, the heel of our lower hand should be placed directly on the spinous process which we're palpating and our pressure should go through the center of the vertebra. For a unilateral PA, find your spinous process and then move approximately one thumb width laterally. And this is where we would perform our unilateral PA if we were talking about the right side of L4. So just to recap, the L4 segment can be found by palpating the iliac crest on the side of the patient's trunk. When we move centrally, we find the spinous process for our central PA, one thumb width laterally to the spinous process for our palpation point for the unilateral. And the direction of our palpation for the unilateral PA is also a directly downward movement, but it occurs on the side of the vertebra rather than in the center. So when performing our central and unilateral PAs, we are influencing both bony and attaching soft tissue structures in order to gauge pain, range, and end feel at each segment. And when you're performing your lumbar spine palpation, it is commonplace to perform your central PA on the spinous process, 
as well as a right-sided unilateral and a left-sided unilateral at each individual lumbar spine segment. So here's where we go through our lumbar spine palpation. As we said, we can, either start, we can either start at the top working our way downwards, or we can start at the bottom working our way upwards. Uh, what I'm going to take you through now is from the top downwards. So if we find our patient's lowest rib and follow this round, this will mark T12 on the spine. So from where we find our central bony prominence at T12, this marks the T12 spinous process. So to find your next segment, you will feel the prominence of the spinous process for the vertebra above, and then a gap which marks the intervertebral disc space. And then, coming after that gap, will be the spinous process for the next vertebra. And therefore, as you go through your palpation, you can use the analogy prominence gap, prominence gap, in order to mark your different spinous processes. So once we've found the T12 spinous process, we find our next gap, and then our next prominence should be our L1 spinous process. So this is where we perform our central PA using the heel of our hand like so. We can then come one thumb width laterally to perform our right-sided unilateral like so. And then we come one thumb width laterally for our left-sided unilateral, like so. So, we can use the analogy prominence gap, prominence, and this should mark the L2 vertebra. From there, we can perform our central PA, right-sided unilateral, and the left-sided unilateral. From there, prominence gap, prominence, will mark the L3 spinous process, so we can perform our central PA, right-sided unilateral, and the left-sided unilateral. From there, prominence, gap, prominence to mark L4, central PA, right-sided unilateral, left-sided unilateral, and finally, prominence, gap, prominence of the next level, which will be our L5. So from there, we perform our central PA on the spinous process. One thumb width laterally, right-sided unilateral, and one thumb width laterally to the left for the left-sided unilateral at L5. And that completes our lumbar spine palpation. A quick tip on percussion. You can perform a percussion palpation on the spinous process of each spinal segment, as pain on percussive palpation may be a sign of a fracture. This can be particularly useful in your elderly population if you're worried about a potential osteoporotic fracture within your elderly patients. So from here, we're also going to palpate the PSIS on the right and left sides, like we did in standing and we can use our similar handling as we did before to palpate these regions. And just a tip, if palpation of the lumbar spine and the PSIS or the SIJ has not recreated any of your patient's pain, you can also palpate other nearby structures such as the buttocks, where commonly irritated structures such as the gluteal muscles, the sacrotuberous ligament, and the sciatic nerve are all located. But please note, if you do choose to palpate your patient's buttock, always explain what you're doing and gain their consent first because of the sensitive nature of this area. So when we perform our palpation, we want to assess pain, range and end feel at each spinal segment. In terms of pain, we want to note at which level we palpated to recreate our patient's pain and whether this was recreated by our central PA our right unilateral PA, or our left unilateral PA. It is also very important in the context of a neurological examination to see whether or not you recreate a patient's neurogenic symptoms in their legs when you palpate a certain point, as this can point out to you the spinal level at fault for their symptoms. So for example, if we perform a right unilateral PA at L5, 
which reproduces leg pain, we know that the L5 segment is likely to be sensitized and may be the source of our patient's leg pain. In terms of range, when you are performing your palpation, try and take your mobilization from the start of the range, through the mid-range, and to the end of available range. If you're stopped at a certain point, either due to stiffness or pain, make a note of this. In terms of end feel, you're looking to see if a particular level is hypermobile, hypomobile, or normal in its end feel. If it is hypomobile, this may tell you that a lack of movement occurs at that particular segment, and the resulting stiffness may be causing your patient's pain. Overall, remember the purpose of what you are doing. If your patient is in a very irritable or hypersensitized state, you may be reducing their trust in you if you go into palpation at each level too aggressively, which may stir their pain up. In fact, if you find that this is the case, you may wish to take palpation out of your assessment at this point and save it for another time. If your patient is in a hypersensitized state, where you find that even very gentle palpation is unnaturally sore, this can tell you enough about their condition as it is. So let's summarize this video on palpation of the lumbar spine. Start your palpation when your patient is in a standing position so that you can assess soft tissue structures whilst they are active. Here you may also wish to assess the levels of their iliac crest and the PSIS to make sure they are symmetrical in their position. Then move on to your palpation with your patient lying prone. Here, make sure you are aware of how to find your palpation points, whether you are to start palpating from the top of the lumbar spine down to the lower lumbar spine, or vice versa. With your patient lying in prone, palpate each lumbar spine vertebra with a central PA, a right unilateral PA, and a left unilateral PA. Here you are assessing for pain, range, and end feel at each lumbar spine level. And that completes our video on lumbar spine palpation. Next, I'd like to suggest you have a look at our other videos within the lumbar spine assessment catalogue, including observation of the lumbar spine. Thank you as always for joining us here on Clinical Physio, and we'll see you again soon.